I'm Jordan. This, this is unedited. unedited. Well, welcome to Unedited. My name is Jordan, and joining me is look who's back. Not Ethan. Yeah, there you go. Just Not joking. Ethan. Sorry, Ethan. I'm back. Yeah, Good I'm buggy. back. How yeah. you doing? Uh, really good. Yeah? How was your really time Really good. It was amazing. What did you do? We went to Maui. Wow. In Hawaii. Did you drive? No, we definitely didn't drive. <laughs> okay. Just wondering. <laughs> we flew there. We got a really sweet opportunity to go there because it's way too expensive. Um, it's... So it's crazy, right? So, but we were very fortunate with people at a timeshare nice. and stuff like that. So there was, yeah, just a very great opportunity. Went with two friends. Um, two friends that we actually just met this year. Yeah. So that was kind of a risk. Yeah. But <laughs> it actually was a good risk because yeah. we uh, had an amazing time. We traveled well together. We're probably going to do more trips together. Okay. Um, it was amazing. Like the people in Hawaii are just laid back. That's nice. And they love their land and they love creatures and animals and vegetation and they respect it. And yeah, the only thing is that if it says the store opens at like nine o'clock. Yeah. It's like loose. Is it? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like somewhere around there. Around there, right? there depending yeah. on the waves and the water and like what, how the That's heat is. Funny. You know what I mean? So yeah. it is different than what we're used to. But sure. uh, anyways, one of the most, actually the most beautiful place I've seen to date. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And I've been in a lot of places. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. to date, that is the most beautiful place I've ever been. So. Absolutely. I think it'd be probably pretty easy keeping a pretty positive outlook um, waking up to that every to day. To the right? ocean across yeah. the street. And it was It was fantastic. I can't say enough about it. Uh, anyone you ever talk to that's gone to Hawaii too, they yeah. light up almost as soon as you say it. <gasps> oh, yeah. you're going to love it. Like, and it's so true. It's so, so, so true. But you guys, how was life here? You know what? Life here was pretty good, all considering. Until uh, I came back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, It was good. Uh, my family actually, unfortunately, we caught COVID there for a bit. So that's why we haven't been on for a little bit too. Uh, but thankfully, we all made it through pretty, we all made it through pretty good. Just kind of, you know, more like mild symptoms moderate symptoms yeah, kind of thing that's so, good that's good so yeah i have to say that but no it's been been a good couple of weeks um you know i was able to listen to a lot of music and catch up on some things um easter was good yeah 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 well my easter there's too many of like people around me who had covid yeah so unfortunately <laughs> our plans changed um so we didn't do your traditional like Easter dinner with everybody okay. and stuff like that. But we did surprise my boys with yes. their first concert. Awesome. And we went to Imagine Dragons, which is not called Imagination Dragons. I was about to say it. Because I... <laughs> <laughs> you admitted to it. Because I said that anyways. Yeah, just for George. <laughs> there you go. Like, I'm burning myself at this time. But anyways, we went. We surprised them. We didn't tell them we were going. Yeah. Um, and so it was pretty cool. Yeah, and that's cool. And the best part was not, like, I mean, obviously the music was great. The Everything was great. But... It was seeing James, yeah. like so into his first concert. Like that's you, awesome. for, you forget what that's like, right? He's yeah. like, "Mom, I can feel the bass in my chest." <laughs> like you know, because you feel that like thumping and that you know the stage. And it was great. They were very loving, humble people. That's cool. I loved all the testimony and the stories because I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff yeah. that they told in between their stories. And it was just really, really good. Awesome. Yeah, I would go to them again. Awesome. I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Our, our Easter was pretty laid back. Uh, we kind of had dinner together. The girls had their Easter egg hunt, which is always epic. Right. right? We did chocolate. So it's still, so funny yeah. how much my older daughter like gets like, you know, 80% more eggs than, than my youngest daughter. Right. But, you know, they, they work it out. It was a lot of fun <laughs> in the end. Uh, yeah. So we did that. Um, last weekend was, 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 was a highlight for me. Record store day happened. I know. So I sent you a picture early yeah, in the morning. That was my picture Saturday morning. I, I, I was standing in line. <laughs> I think I was 15th in line this year, which wasn't too bad. Uh, I've been as far back as like 50th and when I, when I used to live in Winnipeg. Uh, it was it was quite quite a long line. Sometimes it was lines. So just bigger people. there? Like just... I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just bigger population. More people kind of go out, right? So, so but, what were your, what was your number one score? You know what? I, I got it. I got all three things I looked for again. Uh, my number one score was a band that I'm not even that into actually. They're an old band called America mm -hmm. and uh, they got some hits and stuff from the seventies and uh, they released a, like a B-Sides kind of rarities album on uh what was it called? Soap Spud Green Vinyl. So yeah, it was, it was a super cool looking green vinyl. Oh, cool. Came on. But uh it's, it's, it's like rarity versions, alternate versions of their music. It's amazing. Nick loves it too, so that's even a bonus. So do so. you play them when they're these rare? Yeah. You yeah. still do? Because some yeah. people, when they collect them, they collect them and they don't open yes. them or whatever. Yes. No, yeah. no. I think I'm, I'm actually probably anti that a little bit. So, so you're there for I the music? Not them. that, yeah, okay. Yeah, Good. so I opened them right away. I got three records. Um, 
it was fun. Mm -hmm. I like supporting the, the local record store, the Vinyl Diner, mm -hmm. CDs and Records here in Saskatoon. Yeah. Check them out. Uh, that, that, that's a great place to shop, great people. Uh, Darren's are awesome. They'll make you feel great there, Nick too. Um, but uh, yeah, we had fun. Record store day was great. And uh, upcoming this week, anything's going on for you? No. No? Just nothing? I told you, I'm lame. <laughs> Just joking. That is too funny. I'm not lame. We've got things with unedited, of course. No, I'm looking forward to a Ducks Unlimited fundraiser oh, cool. that I'm going to in yep. May, and it's like a 1920s theme. Um, awesome. And night out, it's been tar targeted towards a girl. Not Tarzan. Like, okay. stop it. Do you guys even understand why he would go straight to Tarzan when I say 1920? I just care. <laughs> if you do, write it in the comments because Ashley and myself have no clue where that came from, but whatever. Feel free to defend me. Anyways, we were looking for something different to do, fun to do. And for a good cause. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it yeah. kind of was all wrapped into one. It's like a dinner and games night and whatever. So we'll see what yeah. that's like. So that's what cool. about you? What's your plan? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Blades game tonight's happening. Uh, they're down 0-2 in the right? series. Yeah. yeah. They're down 0-2. So me, my, me and my buddy thought we better go tonight because if they're down 0-3, it's going to be worse going the next day. Yeah. So hopefully they give us a fighting you. chance. Got Support that. Got the, yeah. NFL drafts on Thursday. I'm um, looking forward to a few other things coming up. Um, yeah, I, 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 spring, I, I, I hope, I hope our nice consistent spring to start up here soon. I know. Uh, I'm waiting to have like fires so, in the backyard yeah, and like all that, that stuff, stuff to kind of start up. Right? Yeah. I guess we can't complain though, because I'm, I'm originally from Manitoba and they're having like the worst, like spring winter in history. Right. Yeah. So, so, it's you know, looking good I won't in the complain about it. So. Well, and it's looking good in the forecast. You said a little bit of rain, right? This weekend. Yeah. And then it's supposed to be super nice next week. So yes, that could be good. Absolutely. Good sign. What is like, there's a saying spring. What is it? Something showers bring, oh, April showers bring May flowers. That's it. <laughs> That's it. But we're I'm about, glad you knew it because I, I certainly wasn't going to get it. We're about to leave April, though, and go yeah. into May on the 1st. So this rain needs to kind of pick right. it up a notch. That's right. 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 Yep. Awesome. Well, while you were away, you couldn't come while well, you said conveniently that you had COVID and What's wasn't that? feeling well. So you That's couldn't right. come to the dance studio. I was this. feeling terrible. <laughs> I, trust me on this one, okay? I'm just joking. The thought of this was just like, oh my goodness. So he I had recovered this. at this point. So we thought he might actually join us. But well, <laughs> no, he was too weak I wasn't feeling to come good. with us. But anyways, mm -hmm. we went to a local mm -hmm. dance studio and we met Laura and we did this new exercise dance class that is so outside of Ashley and our bubble. <laughs> so you can be completely entertained by the video that you're going to see, and then you're gonna to get to meet Laura and a little interview that we had with her. She's absolutely lovely. So take a look. So I'm sitting here with Laura at her studio and we just finished, well I've just finished and Ashley just finished trying her brand new class called Pound. It's really fun because you get to have drumsticks and you get to really focus on your lower body. So what is your studio's name and how long have you been here? The three names is Danspiration that um, we get the name because it's dance and I feel that I want something inspirational and be something different for us. Mm -hmm. I started the studio in 2019, right before the pandemic. Oh, yes. Oh my yes. goodness. Right before that, September 2019, we started the studio because I have a rat patch on my life in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it was the time that I was like, my husband was like, when are you gonna open the studio? I have been dancing forever in Colombia, teaching a lot in Colombia. We had to stop um, February when everything was shut down. Did you do any online stuff? We did or? online, but it was free. We just yeah. made Facebook Live for family. Doing yeah, so we were like, well, let's give it a little bit of joy doing some classes with the family. So my husband would stand down and do ballet with the kids. So, <laughs> that's it, so yeah. great. That's so, so it was great. fun in that time. We had to come back again in that September of 2020 when everything was like, mm -mm, so, so yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're happening. But it was like, I opened and, and we opened just one, one class of each. What now is the studio looking like? Are you busy? Are you... We are adult classes, we kids are, classes. Yes, yeah. we always have been offering kids classes. Okay. So we have kids, a uh, tiny dancer that is for two to four years old. So it's just like a pre-dance and, and they get to try things like that. It's not um, a style like ballet or jazz. We do it's actually, it's most based on ballet, but okay. we do a lot of things that they will train dance skills. So oh, they will okay. train their little legs, and they train their posture and they train things with games. Awesome. And the music, so they have so much fun. You know? And we have little ballerinas that is the upper level is five to seven years old. So we do more focus in ballet mm -hmm. and the class is 45 minutes. 
But I have a training on PDT that is progressive leg technique that works with balls and with other equipment that help the kids or adults to get the PDF better on all the uh, ballet foundation in a better way. One of the things that I need to mention is we are recreational, pure recreational. Because one of the things that I noticed when I was teaching in the community is the parents are like, oh, if we go to a big studio, it's one year commitment. It's the big expenses and it's this. Oh, because and, of the competition. Yes, because of the competition. Yes. And I got that. But a lot of people can't afford it. The environment on dancing in Colombia is different. Like maybe because we are different people in many things. We are more friendly, we are more open. And, and we compete, but we're still friends. And we're still like, <laughs> so it feels like, yeah. it feels like. Enemy. <laughs> no, so I, and so I was like, I want to offer something different. Um, I know there are many students in here, performance students, beautiful students. I totally understand their point, but not everybody has the money for that. And not everyone wants to compete. Yes, they want to have fun, they want to yeah. do dancing for fun, they want to learn some. Sometimes they say, oh, I'm 12 years old and I can do ballet. I said, why? I started ballet when I was 17. 17? Well, that's not to get all at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, 17, because my parents couldn't afford it, because it's, dancing is expensive. Yeah. So do you do adult ballet classes? Uh, we, do, we do bar. Oh, bar, so that's yes. what that is. Bar. Okay. So we focus the adults on fitness okay. and more than in dancing. Okay. We also have hip hop, because so popular for kids. So, for kids. kids. so we have kids, little people dancing that is 5 to 12 years old, and we have for older kids that they are 8 to 12 years old. So awesome. we offer for both. Yeah. We don't go up more than 12 because at that point, kids are either they are doing something else or they, they want to get more serious. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. So, and like I said, we are recreational, so yeah. we want to keep it recreational. So, for adult classes, you have the bar class and the pound class that we did today. Is there other ones you have? And cardio salsa. And then just cardio salsa. Yeah. Okay, so Ashley and I will have to try that, although yeah. we will embarrass ourselves. No! Any kind of dance moves, but you have so much energy that I want to see you teach salsa now. So. Yes, I <laughs> promise you. It's yeah. the most fun one, like, but salsa, the music makes it like different. I use a lot of Spanish music, obviously, because it's salsa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> of course, yeah. So, but they like it. They like to hear the salsa music in Spanish and they like to see it. And I structured the class on um, when we start slowly, show the steps, and then we're increasing the beat so you can get more heartbeat on it. Yeah, we do things that we get your hips moving because not everybody has that. I don't got that. That's, yeah. that's the problem. So, I don't have the hips. <laughs> yeah, so we have music and we have a specific songs that they are for releasing the hips and get your hips moving and, that's get, cool. yeah, and get the shame out of it. Because I feel that sometimes like moving the hips is shameful for some reason. For some reason. Yeah, so we get just the shame out of it and when you get it out of your mind, you get it on your hips. That's so good. Yeah, so that one is a pretty awesome. awesome. Okay, well, I'm super excited that you let us come here today. It was awesome. I hope to be back. Um, I want you guys out there to check out her website, which we're going to attach to this video and to this link, and come and meet Laura, check out her schedule, and check out her classes. It's been great. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So we had a great time. Laura was absolutely fantastic. Um, and actually she emailed me this week uh, saying how her heart has just really been going out to Ukraine and everything that's yeah. going on there, like many of ours. Mm -hmm. But she has Ukrainian families that are part of her studio. Mm -hmm. And so it's just really close to home and they feel like family. And she really wanted to do something. So she's invited us on Thursday to go to this international dance day, but they are actually using it as a beautiful way of expressing how they're feeling and supporting Ukraine, the civilians, the women, the men that are there. Awesome. Um, so it's on Thursday, the 28th at 5.30 p.m. It is at Dr. J. Valens Park, which mm -hmm. is apparently really close to First Avenue North. So you might need to Google that or search that um, and come and support them. So they're raising money for an organization called Streams of Hope, and that money is going to Ukraine. Yeah. Um, so just, yeah, so maybe you can even make it out and see this beautiful dance that they're um, that they're performing but maybe you'd like to donate if you would just write in the comments below we'll make sure that we connect you in the right direction so yeah and they're encouraging you to wear yellow or blue to wear the ukrainian flag colors so absolutely yeah, yeah. 
No, sounds like an awesome, awesome event and for a great cause. And make sure to join us next week for our episode as we kind of focus on the Ukraine and things that are happening there and yep. really just, you know, looking at what's happening across the world. So we're going to get into the talk. We're continuing in our series. You said... What? <laughs> this is actually going to be the last talk in this series uh, for a while. And uh, so we're going to look into a portion today where I find it would have been more, I think it would have been one of those portions that would have been a little bit more shocking to the crowd of its day. Yeah. But yet it's still one of my favorite stories in all scripture. So I'm going to read out of the Message Bible today. And uh, John chapter 8, the Gospel of John, um, says this. It says that Jesus went across the Mount of Olives, went to the Mount of Olives, but he was soon back in the temple again. Swarms of people came to him, and he sat down, and he taught them. The religious scholars and Pharisees led in a woman who had been caught in an act of adultery. They stood her in plain sight of everyone and said, Teacher, this woman was caught red-handed in the act of adultery. Moses in the law gives orders to stone such persons. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something incriminating so that they could bring charges against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the dirt, and they kept at him, badgering him. He straightened up and said, The sinless one among you, go ahead, go first, and throw the first stone. Bending down again, he wrote some more in the dirt. Hearing that they walked away one after another, beginning with the oldest, uh, the woman was left alone. Jesus stood up and spoke to her. Woman, where are they? Does no one condemn you? No one, master. Neither do I, said Jesus. Go on your way. From now on, don't sin. So I've always loved this story because of just, you know, how Jesus really went to this lady's defense mm -hmm. and uh, how he really called out some behaviors in the lives of the people. There's all sorts of things that come to mind when I hear this story. I always wonder, where's the gentleman in this equation? Like, why wasn't, yeah. why wasn't he where dragged was he? out yeah. in, in front of the Always religious the women, scholars? Right? Yeah. yeah, like, you yeah. know, to be stoned himself, right? Good point. And uh, so I think of that. I always wonder, what in the world did Jesus write in the dirt? Yes. <laughs> and there's, like, people who, like, talk about this and discuss it yeah. and guess it and make yeah. series on it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I've, heard, I've heard, like, people like, speaking on this, like, say he wrote this. I'm like, we don't know that. And, like, why so. did John <laughs> feel like he should tell us that information? I know. Like, do you know what I, I mean? know. If this is one of those scenes from scripture, like from the Bible, that I really wish I could, I could watch live, this would probably be it because I'd love to see what he wrote in the Maybe dirt. Maybe just a day. heart. It might have been, right? A smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's no I'm words. wondering what he did. Yeah. So, so, but it's an interesting story because what you have here is um, they're really trying to get Jesus in trouble because they want him mm -hmm. to say something wrong and incriminate himself to have a reason to charge him and put him to death. But uh, they're using someone else to make this point happen. And so they dragged this lady in front of Jesus saying, you know, we, she was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says, stone these people. What do you say? And Jesus just starts writing on the ground, right? <laughs> and, then, so uh, harsh. and then he says, you know, whoever's without <clears throat> sin, go ahead, huck a stone, right? He starts writing on the ground. And it's interesting because they all drop their stones and walk away. And, and the scripture says, beginning from the oldest. So the oldest of them f dropped the stones first and then the younger people, it seems uh -huh. like, did it. I wonder why. I don't know, maybe they were just because they're older, wiser, they're like waiting for their direction, like what, who's going to do what first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like if somebody was really well respected in yeah. the community was to drop their stone and he's saying that he's not sinless. Oh, yeah. okay. It's okay for me not to be sinless and me not to be sin I don't know. Maybe yeah. something like that. I don't know. Thought, right? Like, cause it, I don't know why it it's gives that detail. It's like the best line though ever. I know. I know. Like, Beginning with the oldest, they started dropping them. And then, you know, Jesus says to this lady, woman, where are they? Where are they? Is no one condemning you? She says, no one. And he says, well, neither do I, right? And so a couple thoughts that come in here is I think in the world we live in, sometimes we like accusing people of things. And sometimes I think the reason for that is because it hides kind of like us. It's judgment, right? Yeah. And it makes yourself feel better a little bit. It makes us feel, exactly. Right? It makes us feel like, well, oh, at I least I'm not as bad your, as yeah. that person. Exactly. <laughs> so you I know, wouldn't do what Jordan does. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, I'm okay, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's an interesting story. I think it talks a little bit about human nature, and I think it teaches us something about God. So I got three thoughts about this story that I just want to outline to us tonight. Uh, number one, when I condemn others, I am behaving least like God. So I think I think anytime I condemn somebody or want to quote unquote figuratively throw a stone at somebody for the wrong they do, mm -hmm. what I'm doing is I'm not behaving the way God behaves. Because if there was anyone in this story that who had have, the right to throw a stone, it, it should have been, been Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, and he he ran farthest from it. He mm -hmm. wanted nothing to do with that. He was like, you know, no, not doing it. And uh, it's funny how we as people like to judge each other, like to be tough on each other, but yet. The sinless one, the son of God, was like, no, that's 
not what I'm here to do, right? Even though it would have been justified mm -hmm. for him to do it. So I think that, that, that teaches us something about the it's nature of It's a huge lesson. Yeah, yeah, a huge lesson. Yeah, absolutely. It teaches us something about Jesus and just kind of his nature and who he was. Uh, secondly, I wonder if by pointing out others' mistakes, we already kind of addressed this, that we sometimes feel better about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, you know, if all the attention's on this woman who got caught doing something she shouldn't, then it doesn't point out all the wrongs that I've done. Like, I sometimes wonder if the reason why um, everyone dropped their stones was because, like, you know, they started realizing, like, when Jesus said, okay, whoever's without sin, go ahead. And then they, they, they just realized that none of us are innocent here. That's exactly what I right? think happened, right? <laughs> yeah, none of us, have, none of us um, have any right to be throwing a stone to someone else because we need the same forgiveness that she does. Yeah. Right? And so, and, and none of them were jumping up and down to be accountable in and the, where was in the, the guy? way they wanted her to be. Like, yeah, did, I know. The, did the guy have a stone? Like, was he, like, who I, knows? I have no idea. These right? are questions that, yeah, I definitely <laughs> have about answer. this and I think are interesting. But here's what I think I learned most about Jesus in this story. And this is the final point I want to make is that Jesus always puts people first, mm -hmm. even over religious rules. And uh, yeah. look how they accuse her. Teacher, this woman was caught red handed of adultery. Moses in the law said, gives orders to stone such people, right? And so for them, the law was the thing, the law, the law, the law. Yeah. We're going to keep the law. We're going to put the law first. And, and even if it hurts people, we don't care. The law is what matters. And Jesus, nah. You know, he, 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 put, he put her first. He yeah. thought of her first. You know, he gave her dignity. He gave her love. He showed her grace, showed her forgiveness. And not only that, he taught everyone there something about themselves. Like people often call this story the story of the woman caught in adultery. And, and, I, and I get why we do that, because that's that, that, be that's where that. the focus is. No, it should actually be called Jesus and some guys who got caught with stones in their hands when they shouldn't, right? Because like, like none of us, none of them should have been holding a stone because in light of what he taught that day. Or all who have no, sin. No one was fit for <laughs> it. Call it like, exactly. you all have sin. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it, the story wasn't about that. And Jesus always puts people first, even over religious rules. And I think that's a principle for us to live out in life. I think I, so. I think that's something that we need to do. And, uh, you know, as Christians, we're not there to be counting sins and, you know, you know, pointing at people for all the wrongs they do. As Christians, we need to be people who can be counted on and loving people and being there to help them uh, when they fall down and when they need to be helped up. So I think we learned so much in this story. I think this story tells us about grace. It tells us about second, third, fourth, 15th and 100th chances. Yep. But it teaches us about Jesus, that Jesus came um, not to give us a new law or a new religion, but to love us, to give us relationship, and to teach us how to treat people and one another. That's the most beautiful thing about it. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah. So hopefully you're encouraged by that. And uh, I encourage you, John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11, spend some time just yeah. reading over that and allow that just to challenge your heart and perhaps maybe even challenge some of the assumptions that you have, maybe even about Christianity. It's good. Now what, Jordan? Good question. What now? <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about what we just uh, kind of looked at in the scripture. Um, in John chapter 8, it gives us an outline of Jesus and how he kind of dealt with people and how he kind of dealt with sin and just different things like that. So I encourage you, like I said at the end of the talk, uh, check it out this week. Uh, read through John 8 mm -hmm. verses 1 to 11. Find out what stuck out to you. Make some notes. Just just think through it. Even from share a... it with us if they want to, yeah. right? That'd be really cool. Yeah. So yeah. Leave, leave, leave some comments about what's always stood out to you in that portion of the scripture. And uh, I think there's some take-homes we could all take from that. Um, maybe a question you ask yourself is this. Uh, who have you maybe been tough on? Hmm. Is there someone you've been tough on? Maybe. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's an enemy, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a family member. I don't know what the case Child, may be. Child, a wife, whatever. Exactly. Something. Yeah. And then you've been a little bit too tough on it. Maybe it deserves an apology or you need to, you know, change your behavior kind of towards in that sense. Um, who can you reach out to? Who can you show a break this week? Who can you give grace to? Mm -hmm. Who can you maybe stand up for? Um, maybe, oh, yeah. maybe there's someone in your circle who's having things heaped on them and uh, maybe you could be that person who stands up for them, stands by them, walks with the them. The person who puts the stone down first. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And, and, and honestly, you have the, it is amazing when you're in that situation to have people walk with you, right? And to have people kind of stand with you and uh, that goes a long way. So I just encourage you, yeah. this is such an applicable portion of the scripture. Check it out and uh, yeah, um, figure out how you can go out and love people and uh and uh, let's 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 judge less and try to understand more. Yeah.
Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So we're so glad that you've joined us on Unedited today. It was nice to be back, be back in the studio. Absolutely. And we've got an exciting week ahead of going to check things out. And so you've got to stay tuned for next week mm -hmm. when we do this episode about some Ukraine things and ways to support Ukraine. So we're really excited about it this week. So tune in. You know our socials. They're always attached. So if you have any questions, just please, you, know, so you can comment, send messages, whatever that looks like to you. So we hope you have a fabulous week. Yes, right? Absolutely. Okay, we're going to cheers, but I haven't decided yet if I'm lifting my cup. Okay. Okay, I'm going to lift mine. Because he does this weird twirly thing. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Like, how do you cheers a person like that? Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Have a great week. See you next time. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Well, why do you do that? What's that? I can't do that. <laughs> what color is the first stripe on your shirt? Right here? Red. I'd say that's orange See, that's what Nick would say. But if you go down, there's a more red, red. one. That's red. No, it's red. So. Yeah. Oh, no. You know? Uh-oh. Ask no, Ashley. Ashley, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't no. want to get off the chair. So. Okay. Yeah, so, hey, whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's get recording. Hold the smokes here. <laughs> I am going to a 1920s themed party in there, May. There you go. You can bring that up. I'm going to be a flapper girl. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> You can dress like Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan? Tarzan, yes. What is that? Why? Yes. Okay, fine, Rambo. What? Oh, I don't know. I'm just making up characters <laughs> and shows. We are lost together. Blue Rodeo. So.